indoor golf simulator in Pattaya. We're going to have to check that out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're off into Pattaya. We're going to have a look at uh, Charlie's Indoor Golf Simulator, which is situated uh, just off Third Road. It's actually above the uh, PSC headquarters. So uh, going to be interesting. Uh, he's put some, let's say, some advertising out there already. Um, he's got two two bays, so to speak, to use and uh, let's see what else is there to say about it he's got two gc foresight gc3 uh, launch monitors which are probably the foremost uh, i would say products on the market used by the pros no less you usually see uh, john rom uh, bryson de chambo all the top golfers even royal mcelroy the, uh, using this uh, foresight, they use the GC quad a lot more expensive. It's got four cameras versus a GC3, which is, has a three camera uh, system, um, which gives you the ball data and also the uh, club data. Um, I've actually got one myself, a GC3, but it's only enabled for ball data. Um, but today, at Charlie's place in the indoor simulator, these GC3s that he has set up are actually enabled for ball data as well as uh, club data. So, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I know a few of my numbers on the ball data side of things already. For example, my uh, I think my ball speed is around averaging around about 150. Um, not so sure on the club head speed, so we'll find that out today. That's going to be interesting. Um, managed to get a, an hour's uh, free, if you like, uh, use of this and uh, I'm going to video record, uh, let's say, the situation down there. Maybe do an interview with uh, also with Charlie so he can tell us a little bit more of uh, what he's got there in an indoor simulator. Of course, it's aircon, it's indoors, so that's nice rather than, uh, especially this time of the year in uh, Thailand. Um, so we'll see, see how that fares. Um, yeah, I'm just really interested to see what, uh, as it happens, uh, because I got a near pin on the 13th at Emerald uh, a couple of week weekends ago uh, in the scramble, uh, that near pin won me the uh, one hour lesson at uh, Charlie's Place. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So uh, without further ado, let's get down there. Right, welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, now at uh, the PSC uh, Golf Center. We're at the indoor golf simulator. Charlie's here with me and he's going to explain a little bit about the, uh, the setup here. There's two golf bays as, as you can see on the video footage. So over to you Charlie, just uh, give us a bit of a, a rundown on what, what the setup is here. Yeah, so basically we, we opened at the beginning of April. Uh, there's myself and later in the year we've got Graham who's going to come and teach in here as well. Uh, so basically people can come and have a practice on the simulators here. Yeah. You get all your, the data, yeah. um, you can have a practice, we can do some course play. We had a, a Masters competition last month uh, yeah. which was really cool. Uh, we ended up having about 14, 15 people play which was really good fun. Yeah. And we had everyone in here and it was a really good atmosphere. And then you can come have lessons. We're going to do club fittings. There's, it's the whole works, basically. It's yeah, really yeah. quite and exciting. And you've got in the sim simulator software, because some people are quite interested in this, we've got basically Augusta as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we've got Augusta. Uh, we're going to do Valhalla, because it's US PGA later yeah. this month. Um, 
I've forgotten the name of the next one after that, and then it's Royal Troon uh, is the Open. So yeah, uh, yeah, Pinehurst number two is the US. That's Open. right, US Open Pinehurst. It's, so there'll be a lot of interest. Yeah, there. there's loads. It's, it's it's really really good, really which accurate. which is quite good because uh, I know this is the let's say the foremost setup. Uh, I mean, Foresight GC threes that you've got here. This is uh, let's say the equipment that's used by the pros these days. Okay, they have the GC quad, which is yeah. a four camera system. We've got the GC3, which is a three camera system, but it gives, let's say, our standard of players the necessary real data that you need, which is ball data and club data, which is the most important. But just t tell us a little bit about the uh, the equipment that you've got here, um, just so for the for the viewers, yeah? Yeah, so I've got two GC3 uh, monitors, which is, is plenty enough data um, for, for the average person that's coming along to, yeah. to have a go. Uh, we've obviously got the, the two uh, the two bays here. One thing, uh, it's not in the video, but we've got a couple of aircon units, yeah. which is yeah, massive, especially this time of year where it's so hot. Yeah. You, you can feel how it's nice and cool, and, and when you start hitting some balls, you won't even notice it. But yeah, GC3, it's, the data is, is just phenomenal how good. So many people come in and say, oh yeah, I hit my seven iron 150. Yeah. And they hit it 130. Yeah. And then they wonder why on the golf course they don't shoot the scores they should be scoring basically. So the yeah. data is is really quite good. And I know a couple of guys started having a, a little bit of a long drive <laughs> against each other. Just yeah, yeah. and suddenly you come in, you get the data, and you're like, oh, can I try and beat it? Can I try and beat it? And that suddenly you'd be surprised at how much this data is then transferred into your golf game yeah. on the course. And it's I genuinely believe your three to four shots uh, around and eventually off your handicap better yeah. by coming in using the data. Because if you just randomly turn up, yeah. start hitting, especially wedge games, so many people think of 30, I tell them it's got 30 yards to the green, they hit it 70 yards. I mean, that, that's never going to help your yeah, game, yeah, is it? Yeah. So um, you'd be surprised that how good this data is. I think it's between in like 0 0.1 yeah. variance either way. It is, it's phenomenal. And um, especially down here, we're at the Patia Sports Club mm -hmm. and they actually told me the average handicap is 18. Yeah. So for guys that are wanting to improve, it really doesn't take long. And especially with all the data, we can really get you improved in in no time at all here literally five minutes you yeah i mean uh, it's funny because even uh, i remember watching bryson de chambo's uh, youtube clip and he's saying uh, the importance uh, of indoor let's say simulator and training cannot be underestimated it's uh, actually ah. you can do a lot and it, like you say it's more comfortable in an air-conditioned uh, situation you can relax you can see the data and you can really learn from it as well. We'll come to the data in a minute. I mean, but well, I, what, yeah, one, sorry, one thing on. I was going to add into that is many years ago, obviously the likes of Jack Nicklaus, that era, and even Tiger at the start of his career, they would only be able to try things and then they wouldn't actually know the full results. Whereas here, I can try or whoever can try various different things yeah. because the feedback's instant. Yeah. You don't have to go hit a thousand balls to know whether that's worked or not. Yeah. It's literally three or four swings. Nah, that didn't quite work. Right, we'll try something else. It, it's, it really is yeah, yeah, yeah. incredible technology. I think what we'll do now then, because um, I think what the audience will be really interested in is actually the sort of data that's on the screen because that really is, let's say, the dynamics of the information that will, let's say, tell people what they need to do or where they can improve, club path, etc. So let's get the uh, camera a bit closer and then you can just take us through each, uh, let's say, data point and yeah, just explain yeah. What, what's the most important bits of the, uh, the data that's collected. No, 100%. Yeah? So that's right. the most important thing. All right, let's get to it. Fire away. So the first thing that we have to do with the GC3 to get all the really good data that you'll see here so we have to put these reflective dots and it's just a one dot system. So very simply take it off the, off there and literally put a dot on the top. I'll come a bit closer so you can see. Yeah. So now there's a, a dot there, it's a reflective dot which is then picked up by the camera uh, when we're using the equipment. So I'll just give you 
right. that and it's now ready to hit essentially uh, okay then Charlie let's uh, run through the uh, the data points um, so the viewers have a better understanding of what data can be collected during the, uh, the lessons when they come here or using the indoor simulator okay fantastic so at the top we've got ball speed club head speed and efficiency to, so in actual fact, if you do efficiency times club speed, you get ball speed, which is what they always talk about on TV. You know, he's hit that ball 180 mile an hour ball speed. Okay, so that's how it, a ball speed is only representative of how well you found the middle of the face, essentially, yeah. uh, because you could swing the club really fast, yeah. but miss hit the ball and your, your ball speed will go down compared to when you hit it right yeah. out the middle. Okay. So that, uh, that efficiency is also known as the smash factor. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That is the, it's just the foresight version of uh, smash factor, that. Yeah. Then you've got the launch angle. Obviously, that's very important, depending on what clubs you're hitting. Uh, trajectory, basically, it's very important, especially uh, working with shots into wind, the, better, the lower you can launch it you know, it's going to go through in a more penetrating flight. And what would you say is the optimum launch angle for a driver? Yeah, so we wanting, well, there's a couple of train of thoughts. Originally it was a launch of 17 degrees with Rory McIlroy, but then he started hitting a little bit off the planet. He saw Tiger teed it down and he, yeah. but sort of somewhere 14, 15 degrees okay. on a launch is going to get that penetrating ball flight. Yeah. Um, we, we then, I'm just going to ignore this for a second. Then you come on to angle of attack. So obviously with your irons, you're wanting to come in with a little bit of shaft lean, which is essentially what angle of attack is, and you're hitting down on the ball. Now with the driver, they reckon three degrees up is the optimum. Mm -hmm. Now depending also on uh, club head speed of the user, it might be actually you're not too fussed about uh, about launch angle, we're just more worried about hitting up to get the maximum because ball, uh, your spin rates, which are here, your back spin rates, the average guy then doesn't create enough spin to keep the ball in the air for long enough. And that's why you know, a lot of guys, especially the older, older guys, don't carry it as far because they can't generate enough spin mm. to keep the ball in the air for long enough. So then, then we have the push-pull uh, so it'll either say no, well, it'll say left or right, which is essentially whether you've closed the face at impact, or if you've just, for R, it would be you've slightly kept the face open. Yeah. Uh, backspin, obviously it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you're hitting a, uh, a wedge, you're gonna get up to eight, nine, 10,000 revs of spin on it. And obviously then you could try different uh, wedges like Taylor May, Titleist, Different, different clubs. Then you've got your club puff. So this one here, if you get a little bit steeper, which I have done there, you're gonna get a, a little bit more of an in to out puff. Now we probably want an in and around two, three degrees at most, yeah. um, trying to get people away from out to ins because a lot of people yeah. throw from the top. Yeah. Uh, so they're slicing across the ball basically, uh, yeah. sort of thing, which would be a negative figure, correct? Hu hu yeah, huge really bad that and yeah. it's quite amazing when we build people into getting a little bit more of an in to out path instead of coming like that it's suddenly just dropping in and rotating nice yeah. the results are like tremendous and suddenly people start adding 20 30 yards onto their clubs which yeah. they go i've never hit it that far and it was just literally a, a little tweak uh don't worry too much about t side spin then we have the all-important carry obviously we're in uh Patea, where what you play the course is nine, nine out of 12 months of the year, it is carry. You don't really get a whole lot of run over here. Uh, so I, I, I do concentrate on this number a lot with, um, with guys, but also myself, just purely because you want to know it's not so much about total distance. There used to be this theory years ago about you know, total run out. And, but the reality is, is, if you're hitting onto a soft green, or you're hitting a driver into a soft fairway, the ball's just gonna stop. Yeah. So if you can't, if you're only launching it at 10 degrees and you're not getting any backspin, yeah. it's literally gonna go 150 yards at best. Yeah. Whereas if we can put a little bit of backspin, nice launch, that carry number suddenly goes up to 
Yeah, 220, 230. Just, just going back to the backspin number, because that's quite important for the driver, isn't it? Because, yeah, sorry, uh, yes. When you hit that, uh, you, you're looking for an optimum spin rate, uh, as you call it, of about 2,200, something yeah, like that. Yeah, 2, if you 2 can. to 2, 4, yeah. something in, in and around those figures. It's actually, quite, it's actually quite interesting, and not a lot of people know this about Foresight is. Uh, and it does actually wind me up a little bit, because I see it on the internet, and I, I refrain on Twitter, is you can have a backspin where it drops to like 1,800, that's actually a false reading. Yeah. Uh, so basically the algorithm, same with GC quad um, as well, it will actually over calculate carry. Yeah. So yeah. it'll say you've hit it further. So mm. when you actually get a proper reading of like 2,000, two, three, four, five, you know that's a proper legit yeah. carry and uh, run out sort of thing. So it, the data is fantastic. Then down at the bottom here, uh, I'm not too concerned about descent angle or peak height, more just looking at your offline uh, based on the, uh, the center line here, mm -hmm. just so that then obviously if you're, you're, you've closed the face too much, obviously we're going to end up miles left or right. And then obviously when you then go and play golf, if you're 30 yards left, say of offline, that means if you were to aim dead straight down the middle, as a, and think that, right, I'm going to not miss my hit, miss my shot, you're then having to aim in the right rough to yeah. bring it back. That's how much... So it's, it is actually pretty good data, this offline stuff, because then you can actually calibrate yourself on the course. But there's loads of things that relate into path and all sorts of things that will have a, um, a relationship to is why you're so far offline. Yeah. But the data is fantastic. It's, uh, it really speeds up the process. What's... But quite interesting is a lot of guys especially when they come to their wedges people that have had problems with chipping you know toe shanks fat stuffs fins a lot of it unbelievably is because they're not hitting down and they're so concerned about getting the ball in the air yeah. start scooping and yeah. that's where they lose their angle of attack uh, and they come up on the ball and it's like uh, why have I done that but as soon as we get you on here and put a dot on the club we can start to see right and then, and then just basically fix you into a position that suddenly your strikes. So the, so the big difference between, a, let's say, a normal driving range, um, when you think you go to Siam, you get three buckets of bull, there's 300 bat straight away. And yeah. here is you've got instant data straight away to tell you if your angle of attack's wrong. Uh, you can compare it to the professionals. Not, are you going to be yeah. a professional? But the key thing is, is to help improve your golf, you've got instant let's say, feedback on the angle of attack or the launch angle or the, the club head speed to yeah. make, let's say, adjustments straight away. Because how many times have we seen people on the driving range where they just hit 30, 50, 60, 100 balls, but they're not actually learning anything? Yeah, they might yeah, adjust yeah. a few things, but they just don't have the data instantly to see that. Yeah, and a, a lot of it is you could think as well, you've gone on the course and you've really hit a good one. Uh, sorry, on the range, you think you've nailed it. And then you hit your next one and you might not feel like you've hit it as well and it's gone the same distance. But you'd only know that in here, but whereas on the range, your numbers are a little bit uh, fudged, shall we say. Yeah. The one other thing is obviously range balls are different to your Pro V1s and, and what have you. So yeah. it does, does make a big difference. I so. think the other thing to mention is that the, um, the launch monitors, you can take them to the driving range and give somebody a lesson at a yeah. driving range and give them that same data, but actually physically uh, out in the, uh, yeah, in definitely. the environment. That's one thing that I, I actually do take the launch monitor myself out to have a hit and get the data because it just shows it all on the screen. You know, ball speed, uh, club head speed and angle of attack. It's got it all on the screen. So yeah. that does make things a lot easier for sure. Yeah, just one more question. Um, on the Foresight, we, in the background there, we've yeah. got the Foresight driving range. Yeah. So it's just interesting to let the maybe the audience know that when they're practicing, say, a wedge shot, the driving range and the system can give them a cluster of how close yeah. the balls are and stuff. I think that's quite interesting yeah, for their really customers. Yeah, it's really good because then, so over here, we've got our dispersion so people can actually see where they're at. And, and what's going on, shall we say. So you can see if you hit 50, 60, 70 balls, you're left, you're right. And obviously the whole point is to get that as narrow as possible because 
essentially what I say to people is come in, have a go, let's see where you're at. And a lot of people are, are this wide. The whole point is to get you down to here so that then when you do go on the course, you'll be shocked at how much straighter and your scores are gonna, only going to lower by you know, building in a, a bit of a plan into your game. Yeah, and, and it's not just dispersion sort of from a lateral point of view, it's obviously distance as well. That's so yeah. important, isn't it? Because some people think, oh, hit me uh, eight iron, whatever, 150. And then, yeah, sometimes you when you really hit the career shot, it's 160 in about an average. It may be just 145 or something. Yeah, well, one of the really good things that we can actually do is do something called Know Your Numbers, yeah. which is a gap test gapping test basically and we can see uh yeah you might hit your eight iron 150 for eight shots right or five shots and then you take your seven iron and you only hit your seven iron 155 so that would suggest that your seven iron isn't quite strong enough and, and we can build all of that into your game and understanding right go through your whole bag get the distances for each club, but then you might need to go and get them bent a little bit or yeah. you know, a little bit loft to lie uh, yeah. adjustment, which again, you'd only have the data by being indoors and trying different clubs and getting that understanding. So. Yeah. Just uh, one more question I think it would be interesting for the yeah. audience is the golf balls themselves, what are we using? We're using golf balls that we would actually put in play in tournament or competition. Yeah. As opposed to the driving range, they come with a slightly cheaper balls, which may give you a inaccurate, let's say, distance for the ball. Whereas here, as I understand, we're using the proper ball. So when you hit the ball off the mat here, you're getting a true distance. As opposed to a driving range, you're hitting that type of ball and you may be saying, well, actually, with a new Callaway uh, Soft Chrome X, it would actually get an extra 10 yards more than this yeah, so you can, range ball. So a range ball is typically overspin on the backspin so that they don't go as fast. So they're probably like an eight out of 10 ball, nine out of 10 ball. And then certainly you go to certain driving ranges where the balls have been hit 10,000 times each yeah, one. Yeah. You know, but the data you're gonna get is, is just gonna be rubbish, basically. Yeah, you, yeah. you cannot go on the range and go, oh, I've suddenly hit the ball. No, because it's rubbish. Whereas in here, we use, well, Pro V1s, but you can use any ball you want. You could come and actually, tailor-made, Callaways, Titleist, Pinnacles, you can try them all and see which one uh, yeah, I mean, suits that, you sort of that's thing. That's the interesting thing. The customer can come with his, let's say, preferred balls, yeah. and he hits his own, let's say, uh, ball, whether it be tailor-made, Pro V1X, Callaway X, whatever they're yeah. playing, and then they'll get real data uh, for the club that they're hitting, distance-wise, as opposed to the range, because they can zap it at 150, but then, hold on, I've just airmailed that 150 green. Um, yeah. Out of the range, I was hitting 150, and now it's going you know, over the green. So that's the big difference, yeah. I think the one big thing about that is, is also, you know, when you go on the range, and you're like, oh, I'm absolutely striking it. You know, it's going straight down the middle. What would that be like with my own ball? Yeah. Whereas in here, you can actually use your own balls. You're not going to lose them or anything like that. Um, yeah. it's, it's really good. Your data is... This, believe it or not, give it another five years, it's just gonna overtake. We're still very much in the early parts of yeah. um, ball data, club data, you, you track man's GC quads, there's, yeah. there's flight scopes, Mevo's, uh, I think Tiger Woods has got his own one, et cetera, et cetera. It's all still within 10 years of brand new technology. So yeah. this stuff is only gonna get better and better and better over the you know, next 10, 20 years. And, and I'm sure they'll figure out more data. Algorithms will get better and better. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, it really is phenomenal, especially when you use your own ball and you get, oh, actually, yeah. Because yeah. there is a difference as well. You, you know, when you, f you hit a range ball out the middle of the face, you hit a, a, a premium ball out the middle, it does come off different. And you, it'd be nice to actually go, oh, well, if I've hit it 220 on the range, but actually if I use a Pro V1, it's gone 240, you, you know, suddenly, you get the data and it's a little bit of a buzz and you're like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. If I can do it in here, I can do it outside. It's very much uh, yeah. that side of it. All right, that's great stuff. Well, uh, without further ado, let's see it all in action. Right, we just finished at uh, Charlie's Place. Uh, top level of the PSC uh, headquarters. Uh, great setup and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more in the car on the way back home because it's red hot, but it was nice and cool in there in a moment.
Right, we're back in the car and uh, I thought while we drive home we'll do a bit of a, a recap and review of uh, Charlie's uh, indoor simulator. I mean, I tell you what, it's a great setup. Um, it really does uh, make it very, very pleasant when you're hitting golf balls in an aircon room and uh, the data is just far more superior than what you would get hitting golf balls at the driving range and uh, and sweating a lot you know and um, I think he charges was it 500 baht for you know one hour on the simulator and you just basically set it up the way you want it I mean myself I was just practicing a little bit on the uh, short game shots like 80 yards 120 yards um, and it's realistic the, the really interesting thing is you're using proper golf balls so recall when you're at the driving range you're using range balls and I've also got a GC3 so the ball data when I was at the driving range at Siam which are pretty good dry, uh, let's say golf balls at Siam waterside um, the carry was only 248 250 whereas here when I was nutting the uh, let's say the driver um, similar to what it was at Siam uh, waterside I get a carry of 260 that's because you're using a proper golf ball um, so yeah a bit of a difference there but the interesting thing is you know the the white center line as you see on some of the footage that I'll show you now um, you know going left to the right of it it really gives you that great data if you're coming in you know too far from the inside or over the top your angle of attack um, your club head speed your ball speed your efficiency interesting my efficiency with a driver was way down I mean it was only up probably less than no more than 30% of my drivers were actually hit out of the uh, the middle so a little bit of work to do there but yeah um, a great setup um, lots of information I think will I be back a hundred percent I'll be back why put money in Siam Waterside uh, driving range uh, when I can uh, put the money into uh, let's say this simulator help Charlie out um, really because you just get a load more data instant data straight away um, so very very interesting um, you know it's got the two computers there the two bays um, and obviously in the video uh, earlier on in this video you know Charlie went through you know what's all the, the data points what they're about what are the advantages disadvantages but uh, yeah certainly uh, being in a an aircon room uh, hitting golf balls into the uh, into the into the picture and you get the tracer shot and um, that's really really good you know, the other interesting thing is that if you've got a particular club that you want to work on maybe it's your pitching wedge or and you're looking say 80 yards as you see on some of the video footage you got here it really gives you an idea of your cluster um, took the advantage to get a bit of a lesson off Charlie uh, hips are open shoulders are open so that explains why I was uh, hitting the ball left uh, even on my short game shots so uh, starting perhaps a little bit too close to the ball as well not giving myself enough room to uh, launch the club head down the line so that was uh, also interesting um, great instructor I was uh, fortunate to uh, just listen in on some of his uh, let's say uh, ways of instructing uh, there was a guy came in for a one hour lesson so uh, yeah he, it was interesting to hear Charlie take him through uh, the do's and don'ts what to work on and uh, instant feedback you know I mean uh, can't hit this far Ooh. 30 minutes later he was he's hitting uh, an extra 20 yards so uh, yeah certainly recommend get yourself down there it's uh, very worthwhile um, like I say for me I think I'll be back again and again because it's just uh, yeah driving to town 20 minutes and then uh, get in a nice aircon room what can be better what could be better especially this time of the year in Thailand where it's absolutely roasting hot roasting hot but uh, Anyway guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, um, you know what to do, click the like button, uh, do subscribe and hit that notification bell because uh, when we get uh, 
new videos coming out you'll instantly be uh, notified it helps grow the channel um, yeah and get yourself down to uh, the indoor driving range Charlie's place it's uh, very very interesting for sure um, onwards and upwards uh, tomorrow to Batavia so we'll look forward to a game of golf up there super fast screens up there but we shall wait and see see if a little bit of this uh, instruction from Charlie will help me out in the golf course and shoot the lights out we shall see okay guys hope you enjoyed the video we'll catch you in the next one bye for now